Okay, so the topic of today's discussion is transportation model. In the earlier class, we discussed transportation model and as you have been told earlier, it was developed initially by F. L. Hitchcock, further revised by T. C. Coupons and ultimately it was later on revised by Danzig. So, you know, these famous mathematicians contributed towards this important model called transportation model. And the topic that we are going to discuss today in this model is least cost method. Now again, before starting this model, let me explain you how is this model operating. As you can see, there are three factories in this particular model and four warehouses. Warehouses refers to those places where you stock goods. So before you know, a final product is passed on to the customer. It has to be stored in godowns where it is inspected. Then it is passed on to wholesalers, retailers and ultimately to the customers. So warehouses refers to those places where goods are stocked. Now you must remember that all these values are representing per unit transportation cost. <clears throat> like for example, if F1 is supplying 1 unit to warehouse 1, then the per unit transportation cost is rupees 19. From factory 1 to warehouse 2, per unit transportation cost is rupees 30. Then factory 1 to warehouse 3, the per unit transportation cost is rupees 50 and so on. So all these values are representing per unit transportation costs. Now supplies and demands, these are representing quantities. Like in this case, factory 1 is supplying 7 units, <coughs> factory 2 is supplying 10 units and third factory is supplying 18 units. Now what do you need to do? You need to transport these 35 units which are manufactured by these 3 factories to all these 4 warehouses in such a manner so that their demands are satisfied and the transportation cost comes out to be minimum. That is the idea behind this model. That is transportation of these total units over here the total units are 35 to all these 4 warehouses so that the demands are satisfied and the idea is to get the minimum optimum transportation cost. Now how will you do that? In the earlier lecture you studied that you can derive this initial optimum transportation cost using northwest corner. Now is the turn to derive the initial optimum transportation cost using least cost method. And in the next lecture, we will be studying the <coughs> deriving of the initial optimum transportation cost using Vogel's approximation method. So most popularly these are the models that are used to find out the initial optimum transportation costs further which can be revised by Modi method. So that will be learning later on. But let us start with this least cost method. Now, out of the whole lot, all these costs, you have to select that cost cell which has got the minimum value. So from all these values, <coughs> looking at all these values, we can ascertain the minimum, the least cost cell is 10, right? From all the rows, we will have to select that cost cell as well as looking at the columns, we will have to select that cost cell which has got the minimum value, the least value, that is 10. Now you have to compare the supply which is right in front of it and the demand which is below it. From the supply as well as the respective demand, you will have to select that value which is the minimum value. So from 18 as well as 8, the minimum value is 8. So you have to make space for the allocation and how will you make an allocation? First of all, a least cost cell is selected and you will have to compare the supply which is right in front of it and the demand which is exactly below it. So out of both these values, you will have to select the minimum value. Now between 18 and 8, the minimum value was 8. 
This aid is allocated. Now this aid is subtracted from both supply as well as demand. So AD minus 8 will give you 10 and 8 minus 8 will give you 0. Now remember, if the demand turns 0, the entire column will be deleted. Then delete it by you know, either dotted line or by using pencils. So the entire column is deleted because the demand of warehouse 2. Now it is, it has been done. So the warehouse 2, you know, it requires no more unit. So this option is terminated and in short, whenever the demand turns 0, the entire column will be deleted and vice versa, if the supply turns 0, then the whole row will be deleted. The entire row will be deleted. Over here, the demand has turned 0. Now when the demand has turned 0, this whole column will be deleted. Now, from the remaining cost cells, we are left with some more cost cells. What is the minimum cost cell? 12. That is 12. So 12 is selected. Now you will have to look for the supply which is right in front of it and the demand which is below it. So from 7 as well as 15, the minimum value is 7. So you allocate 7 units to this particular cell ultimately reducing 7 from supply. So 7 minus 7 will turn 0 and 15 minus 7 that will be equal to 8. Now the supply of factory 1 has turned 0. So as you if told the entire row will be deleted. If the supply turns 0 the row will be deleted and if the demand turns 0 the entire column will be deleted. Now we are left with these cells 70, 40, 40, 60, 60 and 20. Now from all these values, what is the next least cost cell? That is 20. So this 20 will be selected. Now the supply which is in uh, right in front of it is 10 and the demand below it is 8. So between the supply as well as the demand, the minimum value is 8. So you will allocate 8. Now 10 minus 8 will be equal to 2 and 8 minus 8 will be equal to 0. Now this entire column W4 will be deleted because you know the demand has been thoroughly done. It requires no more units now. So as soon as the demand turns 0, this whole column will be deleted. Right? So if you carefully see, this warehouse is gone. Fourth warehouse is also gone. And this first row has also been deleted. Now we are left with these four values. 70, 40, 40 and 60. Now what is the next least cost cell? 40. Now since there is a tie between these two cost cells, take down a rule which is a tie breaker. Please take down. Getting the problem everyone because over here there is a tie. Tie between the least cost cells and that is 40. Now please take down this important rule. If there is a tie, if there is a tie between, if there is a tie between least cost cells, if there is a tie between least cost cells, comma, then select the then select the least cost cell select the least cost cell having having highest allocation of units and select the least cost cell having highest allocation of units Again it down. Okay. Now since there is a tie between these two least cost cells, so now looking at the first least cost cell, in this 40, the supply which is right in front of it is 10 and the demand below it is 7. So from 10, 
as well as you know comparing the demand how much can we allot we can allot 7 units this you know this is the process that we have been following between 40 i mean and we are comparing this 40 the supply in front of it is 10 and the demand is 7 so between 10 and 7 we can allocate 7 now looking at this 40 the supply right in front of this 40 is only 2 units and the demand below it is 5 so between 2 and 5 we can allocate 2 units only now what do we do we we'll have to select the highest allocation and the highest allocation is corresponding to this 40 which is lying in second factory and third warehouse so this 40 will be selected now 7 minus 7 will be 0 and 10 minus 7 will be equal to 3 so as soon as this demand turns 0 this whole column that is corresponding to warehouse 3 will be deleted so is this type writer rule clear next we are left with only these two least cost cells between 70 and 40 now the least cost cell is 40 so this 40 will be selected now in this 40 the value right in front of it as far as supply is concerned is 2 and the demand below it is 5 so between 2 and 5 what is the minimum value that is 2 so 2 minus 2 will be equal to 0 and 5 minus 2 will be equal to 3 so as soon as this supply turns 0 the entire row corresponding to F3 will be deleted now we are left with only one cost cell so automatically this would be considered as the least cost cell this will be selected the supply right in front of this is 3 and the demand below it is also equal to 3 so you have to allocate 3 units now this demand will also turn 0 and the supply will also turn 0 ultimately all the values of demand as well as supply will turn 0 <coughs> as soon as all these you know demands and supplies are exhausted we are going to calculate IOTC what does IOTC stands for initial optimum transportation cost I repeat initial optimum transportation cost now please see how this initial optimum transportation cost will be calculated you will have to select that cells which are which are you know the allocation with them you will not be looking at the unoccupied cost cells you will have to look for only the occupied cost cells like this 12 will be multiplied by 7 right next 70 will be multiplied by 3 next 40 will be multiplied by 7 again you will have to you know ignore the unoccupied cost cells you will have to select only the occupied cost cells then 40 multiplied by 2 then over here it was only 10 10 multiplied by 8 and finally 20 multiplied by 8 now let us see what is the cost over here 12 7 is that will be equal to 84 70 into 3 will give you 210 40 multiplied by 7 will be 280 40 multiplied by 2 will be equal to 80 10 multiplied by 8 will again be equal to 80 and 20 multiplied by 8 will be equal to 160 now add all these values and you will arrive at the initial optimum transportation cost using least cost method that is 894 rupees so 894 rupees would be the initial optimum transportation cost using least cost method 
please take down this answer and if, is, if there is any query you can always ask as far as you know the least cost method is concerned is this model clear right okay.